to go that fast with that much lean angle, that's basically an immediate crash. Hi, my name's Casey Stoner. I'm a former MotoGP World Champion. In my career, I managed to win two MotoGP World Championships. Today, we're looking at motorcycle scenes from movies and judging how real they are. Motorcycle with one hand isn't difficult at all, but with your opposite hand is very difficult. As soon as you look around or look back, quite often you veer offline and there's people that can ride and do wheel stands and stoppies while riding backwards and side saddle and all that sort of other thing. Uh, but it takes a heck of a lot of practice and it's not at those speeds while, while trying to sword fight. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of, um, of realism. <laughs> In, in that one, trying to get something through a wheel when it's spinning that fast is nearly impossible. If anything happens to the back wheel, it certainly doesn't cause the front to come up and, and go. Now, if something gets lodged in the front wheel, that will happen, you know, the back will come up and go over the front. Was, uh, was quite realistic. Wet white line, the way we explain it in racing, it's like ice. As soon as you come across a white line that's um, not painted with a special grip, it's literally just as soon as you touch it, you know, you're pretty much gone. If you know you're gonna crash or you know you're gonna hit something, a lot of the time the best way is either just to lay the bike down because a low side or a front end lose, there's gonna be a lot less complications when you have a high side, which is when you lose the rear end and then it creates grip again and then it flicks you over the high. and Basically, it sends you up in the air, so when you go, what goes up must come down, and uh, it's a lot more painful, and I definitely had a little more experience than I'd like. I would say probably a, a two. Eyes would be watering, that's, uh, that's for sure. You know, the, the no helmet thing would be probably the most difficult aspect. Any little bits of dust, a, a rock flicking up off a car, off the bike in front, it's almost impossible, a lot of the stuff he does. We do that basically to get a, a feeling of where the ground is. It gives us an understanding of, of where our lean angles are and things like that. Now, without a knee slider, it's doing very little other than to um, take a bit of skin off. And I've seen bikes explode as these are kind of standard road bikes. The temperatures are so high, um, especially around the head of the exhaust, that um, it really can ignite quite a lot. So the shifting is something to be brought up a little. You don't need to, to do a clutch. That's a very, very old uh, system to basically ease the bike in a little bit easier and a little bit smoother into gear. Unless you're going back gears, going into a corner, you don't need to use a clutch. On modern bikes these days, we have something called a quick shifter now. So it cuts the power to the engine for a second, allows the, the bike to, to reduce a little bit of torque so that the gear can, can, um, can select and then they can keep going. The crash was, was pretty fine, you know, losing the front end in that situation. I guarantee he would have a little bit of meat missing down the, down the side of his body. As soon as you touch tarmac, it loves to, to rip apart whatever you've got, even with leathers on. But overall, because he slid onto the gravel as well, uh, it would have been a little softer than, than sliding the whole way on tarmac. I'd probably rate this scene around an eight. I mean, going upstairs on a bike uh, realistically isn't very hard at all. Even for myself, who's, who's not a technical rider like this, they actually have that as part of a race, going up them and down them, and, and they're actually racing through the street. Riding across the top of that small gap uh, would have been the most difficult part of, of that whole scene. As easy as it seems when you're going at that speed, one little mistake can be quite catastrophic. So getting those gaps would have been, um, would have been definitely a little bit tricky at those speeds. You know, they were doing a very, very good job on that scene. It's not that hard to do those sort of jobs. Actually, the faster you go, the better it is. Uh, the slower you go, the, the, the more straight down you sort of go. But if you come down and you, you you land um, flat from too high of a point, can break your wrists, break your ankles. If you hit the seat as well, people have broken their backs and things. So um, it can be quite tricky. You know, those drops were realistic. You can do that. But uh, yeah, it starts getting bigger than that, then some injuries start to happen. It'd probably be a nine. Pretty incredible what people can do on bikes, especially these days. They just keep pushing the limits. 
they actually had a key this time. They got it right with that. They needed a key to start the bike. Jumping off the truck might have been possible with a, with a motocross bike or an off-road bike, but with a road bike with two people on it, as soon as they landed, it just would have bounced them and high-sided or something, you know, they, they basically it was nearly impossible for that to happen. The burnout turning around, yes, that's possible. The, the, the way they were just sitting there and doing it, especially with two people on board, it, you've got a lot of weight over the rear tire. It's quite hard to then get it to spin around. A lot of the whole burnouts and then taking off from there basically being like a boost, that's not the case. It's a negative for us. If you've ever seen somebody do burnouts and you have a look at that tire afterwards, there's a big um, flat part of the tire because you've basically just melted the rubber off it. And we don't want it flat, we need to keep a round surface. With cars, you kind of do need to do a burnout sometimes to try and heat the tire through. A lot of movies get this wrong, but this one in particular is the fact that cars can just catch them so quickly. There's very few supercars that can go as quick as what bikes can, uh, especially a, a, a Ducati, you know, that's top of the line at the time. Bikes have acceleration that's incredible, you know, it's basically a 160, 180 kilo bike uh, for 200 plus horsepower. The ratio is extreme and uh, when they've got cars that can just zoom right up to them, it's, that's probably the most unrealistic part. The riding through the traffic and everything at the beginning wasn't too bad. I think with two people on, it's, uh, it's unrealistic. You can't change direction that quickly. You know, road bikes, the faster you go, the harder it is to change direction. If they're going at the speeds that they're, they're implied, those manoeuvres just aren't, aren't possible. The stunt riders, they've got to have cars coming along with them, so they're restricted to what speed they can do. And when they're going slower, it's actually quite hard to have good form, as if you were doing those fast scenes. So. Uh, it's a very tricky thing to do and that's why I was impressed with the Mission Impossible because you're actually able to um, see they've got quite good form all through that scene. They've got quite good styles and everything like that. So I would rate this a three or a four again. The fact that they had a key, I really like that aspect. Harleys in general are a, a, a little difficult to ride. They're, everything's so low slung and it's quite actually hard to get them to, uh, to corner at the best of times. Harleys actually can have quite a lot of horsepower. I mean, they're, they're incredible machines. As soon as you, you go down through any kind of dip or, or curb, uh, it's not gonna like it. There's no way a big bike like that wouldn't just land and, and go into a ton of pieces and if it was real I mean I don't think they have much of a back left so that's quite hard for me to, to, to see actually happening. A uh, big heavy bike like that you know landing from that sort of drop only a dirt bike could make that drop and it's still gonna hurt a bit. I would say 3-4 again there's parts of it that were that were realistic enough. Drifting on a, on a motorcycle on road bikes definitely possible. To go that fast with that much lean angle, that's basically an immediate crash uh, at, at those sort of speeds. And for me at that angle, it's just sort of not possible. There's gonna be no more grip and, and the bike will go away from underneath you. There's lots of elements. Again, we're talking about on the street as well. So if it's on a racetrack, you've got consistent grip levels, etc., etc. et cetera. Um, But this is the first time seeing it on a street, there's oil spills, all that. It's gonna be very difficult to manage and judge those situations so I would say that's nearly impossible. That's not a problem to do that and, and create a stoppy. The distance that she did it in though was probably unrealistic because to, to do a stoppy actually makes you stop slower. Um, if you've got the rear wheel let's say a foot off the ground that's not too bad that's at about your braking limit because there's a certain force and angle and everything as soon as you start going too far then that force is carrying you over the top. For someone to stop that quick with a stoppy, it's, it's not realistic. It's an electric bike, so they don't have clutches. Just use a throttle with an electric bike, which again would probably make the, uh, the burnout that she did quite difficult as well. I would say, again, three, four mark.
riding with two people doing something different is, is nearly impossible. It'd be easier to ride one-handed than it would be um, to ride with two people like that. For two people to just jump on and one use the clutch and the, the left uh, handlebar and one use the, the throttle and brake on the right, unless you've practiced day in, day out with someone, uh, to do something like that's, you know, that's impossible. The, the noise of this bike, there's no way a big bike like that is going to be that quiet. It sounded very much like a scooter. So many scenes, you'll see a, a, a two strokes that sound like a four stroke. They just, you know, they haven't quite got it right. And this one um, almost sounds like a scooter that's taking off. You know, it certainly doesn't sound like a Harley of that big bike that they're actually riding. Doing a wheelie like that on that bike is, is, it's not impossible. Big heavy bike like that, you're gonna to struggle to really get the power. It's long and the balance point's very, very, uh, it's, it's quite bad on those sort of bikes. You know, they're made to stay on the ground. They're not made to get the front wheel in the air. So I've seen people that can wheelie just about anything. But um, yeah, I would say again, that's a very, very low probability to be able to do that. Wheelies do not help you go faster. Uh, the amount of times I see them drop back a couple of gears and, and then chuck a wheelie and all of a sudden they're flying along, it's not faster. Um, all of your, your weight then is going up. It's the same with the stoppy scene. If you've got your weight going down, it's, it's wanting to overtake you. But with a wheelie up here, you can't accelerate. You can't get going because basically the bike wants to, to keep going the other way. So wheelies, especially in racing, is our enemy. Uh, occasionally you can come up and control it, but it has to be no more than six, eight inches off the ground. Um, and that's where we find that sort of balance point. You get any further than that, it wants to start overtaking you and then you have to start backing off. So unless you're throwing a wheelie, I guess, to stop some bullets, you know, hitting you as, uh, as we've seen in quite a few. Uh, yeah, there's, there's no way wheelies are, are helping you out. Of course the jump is impossible and just going through a roof and surviving it and not breaking your backs on just the impact. That one was very, very difficult to, to see the realism in it. And I'd probably go a, a one or a two. I, I know the, the rider who actually uh, did that and ridden with him personally and, and know that everything's possible that's in that movie. So, you know, there's, there's nothing unrealistic for me there. The jump that he made up the, up the wall is definitely possible. He had, you know, a small amount of ramp there from the curb. The key to getting up uh, heights like that, it's all loading the body, loading the bike, loading the tires and suspension all at the right moment. So they use that little pop, that ramp for the front end to get that up. And to get over a wall like that, you can't just clean jump it. So basically they're using their rear tire uh, they jumping up as far as they can, keep the front tyre over the top of it and then they use their rear to ride up the last bit and then that helps the front clear and then they use their momentum to get over. So everything that he did was, was you know, 100% real, so 10 out of 10. Uh, they kept themselves in a, in a realistic state there, so I, I like that one. Steve McQueen's an absolute legend and I think did most of his own stunts ever on a bike and things like that. He was, he was just incredible, you know. There was uh, no special effects or anything like that. That was uh, a clean, you know, honest jump and everything. Grass isn't too bad if you've got off-road tyres, uh, knobbies, you know, if they're fresh and have sharp edges. Uh, grass really isn't too bad to ride on. Uh, it gives you a fair bit of grip, but on the type of bike he was on with those tyres, there wouldn't have been a whole lot of grip. It was nice to see a couple of little slide outs there, things like that, because it was, you know, lush green grass. It ends up being um, very, very slippery, but, you know, to be honest, quite a lot of fun. The jump, definitely possible. Everything's plausible. So, yeah, I'd have to give it a 10. The sparking boots is something that they would have made or designed. It could just be a few screws um, that they put around the edge of the boots. We started to do a night race in Qatar. And during the night race, uh, when I was racing Ducati, we had uh, quite low foot pegs, the way our bike was designed and everything. So during the daytime, you couldn't see it sparking. But at nighttime, because I was touching the foot pegs on one of the corners in the track, uh, it would spark quite a lot. It's not too difficult to get, uh, to get some sparks happening at nighttime. Were all, were all possible.
possible, uh, the stoppies were possible. It's all more than plausible, it's all stuff I can do myself, so if I can do it, definitely uh, there's some people out there that can do a heck of a lot more than that. The one thing that I probably couldn't do was when he did the handstand. <laughs> they only used the clutch when they were going back gears. Uh, they weren't going too fast doing everything. Uh, everything and every manoeuvre they did was plausible. Everything's um, realistic there. I'd have to say, yeah, 10 out of 10. If you enjoyed this video, click here to watch another one.